Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Wildlife Overdose uh, Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about kind of how we put our food plots in, what food plot seed we use, and uh, just in food plots in general, uh, yeah, that, what they can do for your herd. And, this is one thing that I really like stressing to people about what uh, you know how to attract deer and how to attract turkeys. Um, you know, you can you can put corn out and you can put other products of feed out all, all year round and attract things, but to save you, actually save you money and, and, uh, well, in order to put enough corn out to sustain the herd, you're going to have to put a dump truck load out yeah. a week. And, and the price of corn just, and things like that right now. But so food plots, I mean, I've been, I've been putting in food plots for four years now, something like that. Um, one of the biggest things I look for, um, cause I love to turkey hunt, um, and deer, deer also like uh, clovers, any kind of clovers, alfalfa, and they, you know, briscus, uh, rape, um, sorghum. I mean, just all kinds of crops that you can plant. But what I've had really, really good luck with is uh, different types of clovers in the spring. That's what we plant, and um, crimson clover, alfalfa, and, and red clover, white clover. Um, I don't, I've never planted any of what I call hop clover or yellow clover. Uh, it's a little bit smaller, like Lespedes or things like that. But um, I, I've, I've actually went to farms that we've started leasing and, and plant these clovers. And within a year, uh, we had turkeys. The farm, the, the owner of the farm said he hadn't seen any turkeys there. And, and I've done it, uh, I don't know, four or five times now on different farms that plant the clovers. And the turkeys that come and the deer yeah. come. They love the clover, um, the, the and crimson you, clover. I mean, yeah, turkeys you, love and it. And clover and alfalfa, I mean, you're, you're talking somewhere around 21, 22% protein, 20. Yeah. Uh, and you get your relative feed values way up there with clovers. And and you're not getting that from fescue, yeah, you know. Not, no. So, yeah, you may have a pretty green field, but yeah. it's not doing the herd any good. It's not going to attract them as much. Yeah. That clover, it stays smaller, it stays palatable. They're going to come to it frequently. Yeah. So we, I, we kind of switched gears uh, this year. Um, we kind of teamed up with Holler Dog uh, Outdoors and uh, here in Missouri, and he's a carrier for uh, domain uh, food plot seeds. And uh, I'm actually planted uh, here just a couple weeks ago. Come back yet? It's four different types of clovers in it. Yeah. It covers about somewhere close to an acre the way I done it. Um, there wasn't any clovers in the field, so I put it on uh, pretty kind of a little bit heavier right before rain, and it'll start popping up any time now. But um, if you want to, you know, it doesn't take much effort. Uh, I think Daniel he he's got a he's got a four wheeler and a, a pick and a tractor tire or something he drags around and breaks all the ground up in the grass and just just turns it into just a dirt and then he broadcasts the seed and i've done anything from burning fields and uh, or bush hogging it down low and then broadcast it on the ground and uh, usually put out a little bit of, of corn or different things to for them to eat uh, to go to stop them from going in there to eat my seed before because yeah, as soon as that tender shoots start coming up they love it and they'll wipe out a food plot yeah, hurry timber but um, I mean, last was it last year you plowed some ground up and broke yeah. uh, some ground. And yeah. I've got some this year that I've got one small plot of the big sexy started. Uh, I just kind of want to see what it is before I go bigger with it. Um, I've got another spot that I'm hoping when I get back from the wedding in June, I'm going to start clearing it. And oh. if it all works out, it's going to be about a two acre food plot right smack dab in the middle of everything and draw everything off the corners straight down into it um the land i've got that we hunt down south it is all just thick gnarly timber not you've got some white oaks that are producing but not a lot of acre production wow. so the food plot i do have now that's existing it's about an acre and the deer are so thick and plentiful they mow it down as soon as i mean i've never been able to get it to grow above ankle high because yeah. It's not big enough just this is to sustain the herd, and yeah. it's kind of up top where you've got not as good of soil and more rocky. And when they go to it, they're pulling it straight up out of the rocks. And well, that's so. one thing. Domain um, holler dogs brought a seed over to us, and something really interesting. And what I like, it's a little soil 
uh, sample kit and uh, he uses the container after he puts the seed down and stuff or, or from other plots yeah. puts the soil in there and he does all this testing and he helps you get seed. it ready so you're not just wasting money throwing it out there and hoping it comes up and especially for fertilizer and, yeah. and things like that the cost of that and i've used liquid and i've used pelletized fertilizer and um, but you make those decisions yourself either one of them works great but um, the one thing I did notice about planting uh, domain, the domain seed, um, I had some other seed that from last year, and I thought I'd just get rid of it, and I threw it out there. Uh, this is really super clean seed. Uh, my hands, there was nothing on them. Um, after I broadcast, I kind of just threw it with my hand. I didn't have my little spreader. And then my other seed that I, I broke it open, it was just, I my hands were black, like gunpowder kind of stuff on all over my hands and just super clean, uh, clean seed and so I'm, I'm excited to see how it uh, turns out and I know some other people that has uh, used domain and food plots uh, for their food plots and it's worked great and they've had really good luck with it. But, um, well that's what, let's go back to kind of how we do our food plot. Like I know Ronnie, he gets the tiller out and tills his in and Domain has so many different products, you don't have to necessarily go with a tillable top seed. You can go with just a, a rake and throw and grow and still get a quality food plot. M me and Daniel, we kind of like the more kill plots because we bow hunt a lot. So we like the little half acre little plots that's right in the middle of your timber that, wow. you know, just attracts them long enough for a shot. Um, but then I also like to have one that I usually tear up the ground and till in or even I've took the box blade and ripped it up to, you know, where I can get it seed in the ground good. Yeah. Um, I've been as far as tying a cedar log to it afterwards and dragging it around to yeah. kind of cover the seed over to make sure that it's not getting picked at by the turkeys and the birds yeah, and stuff. You, and you knew cedar tree. You don't, you don't have to have dog. super duper equipment to go no. in there and put a food plot no. in. If you're willing to put in a back work, you can take yeah. a leaf blower and a rake. Yeah. Kirby come and got my leaf blower to go into the woods and uh, and blow all the, the leaves and stuff on to get down to bare ground. And uh, But I've, I've had really good luck. Um, well, most of my hunting areas, I like hunting field edges and hay fields and different things like that. So... Where I plant in this area, the farmer is able to cut that for hay and they get the hay off and it helps uh, keep clipping those down and, and regrowth and things like that. So the grass is kind of low and, and they're fertilizing for me because they're fertilizing their hay fields. So I kind of utilize that yeah. and, and plant my my crops in that in with her so they can get the hay off. But, but, uh, there's so many different ways, like you said, to, yeah. to, to yeah. be able to put a food plot in and it's not costing you a lot of money. I've, I've very rarely tore up ground to plant. I mean, clover, I think it's like a quarter inch or maybe a half inch deep. It doesn't uh, have so to be So if you deep. got loose soil, uh, if it rains, the next day you might want to go throw some seed out there if it's going to rain again, and that help push that seed down in the ground and get it where it needs to be anyway. Yeah. And I've had really good luck with that, um, unfortunately. But uh, one of the gains for me is the farmers spreading fertilizer fertilizer on the hay field, so it's it's fertilizing my food plots too. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and that's me. My areas that I usually put a food plot. Yeah, I've got the tractor and stuff in there, but it's not easy or accessible to get in there with a sprayer of any kind. So I typically use a liquid, and I'll carry in a couple five gallon buckets of it with the side by side and put it in yeah. a backpack sprayer yeah. and you know spray it. And I'll take something with me and drop and mark kind of where I've sprayed and. Usually in the usually in the fall, I'll go back and um, I'll put some more clover out, especially in my patches and stuff like that. It was kind of patchy, but uh, then I'll throw some radishes out there uh, with for some, them for some late season, uh, late season. season stuff like that. I used to use. Uh, I've tried and tried and tried um, the uh, turnips, and it seems like they'll eat the tops of them off of them, and it seems like the frost gets mine for some reason. <clears throat> but uh, as far as them eating the turnips, the, it's usually about January before they're going to we've got to a hard freeze, and that's yeah. the only thing that's left. And so then they'll eat it. Well, usually, I mean, hopefully I'm tagged out by then yeah. or, you know. But uh, as far as one thing out of, uh, well, two things, to be able to, to go in, and it doesn't matter if you have a five-acre patch or, or 500 acres, 
if you put with our experience is that if you if you put your mineral out and you put your food plot out there they're going to come uh especially something that they like and if they're if it's if you have like you said your your hay fields with orchard grass or fescue and different things like that and you plant this this patch of clover or alfalfa or and there's sunflower seeds and some of these, some wheat and rice and different things like that. They're they're going to walk through that fescue and orchard grass fields to get to your your food plot to that, that lush grass that they want and it has nutrients and yep. and and that drive for um, of what's in that plant to to to, to help their health. I mean, yep. uh, they they can re they regulate themselves just like on minerals as they do food plots. Uh, if they're you know if they're lacking their their carbohydrates and proteins and different things like that, they're going to go to their highest source. Yeah. And, and get this that. is going to go hand in hand with your mineral and overall herd health. Yeah. You know, if there's no food, you're not going to have healthy deer. Yeah. And one thing I really like about having a spring food plot, usually I don't get to turkey hunt over one. If I do, it's great, but I try to save it for the kids or yeah. whatever. Half time I'm so busy I don't get a spring plot put in, but what I really like is if you can get a spring or summer plot, you're feeding those deer all year long, and you can kind of get a little bit. Yes, they change as the rut comes, but you get an idea of early season where those deer are coming yeah. from, and you can set up accordingly and know kind of, okay, well, I have to hunt this food plot on this wind. Yeah. And, you know, are they patternable to an extent? But, you know, deer are always going to do what deer do best. Yeah. You know, they're going to survive. But... It gives you that one little bit of an advantage to where you can kind of set up and better your chances of killing that three, four-year-old buck. Yeah. Now, so. you up in in our area, we're hills and hollers, and there's not much crop land down in here. We're more more of a rocky soil and and things like that. So if you get up in their northern states and northern Missouri and stuff like that, that where there is soybeans or milo and, and different crops planted corn and and different things. Um, you know, still, yeah, you can throw uh, some radish seed or you can throw some clover seed out underneath of that corn, and they're going to they're gonna use that to their advantage <laughs> to, to hide, but uh, they're going to still go after that food plots. And, you know, and if, even if, you know, it's a little bit different to hunt those types of countries because you're going to have to find where they're coming out of and when they're go- where they're going back in and where they're spending their time. Um, and then if... Yeah, like I said, if you plant your throw some seed out there underneath the corn or milo and stuff like that, when the farmer comes in to harvest that that plant that you that you put down the clover and stuff like that, it's going to be a lower than what they harvest. Yeah, it's so already it, going to be established be there, and, and they're going to you know tear that up just as well. Yeah. And there's going to be times where in that kind of country where they're going to shy off the food plot for a week or two while the soybeans are perfect for. Yeah. You know, ripe when they like them. There will be times when the acorns fall and they shy away from the food plot. But more than likely, if you've established that food plot and they've got into a pattern of cutting through it, they're still going to cross through yeah. it or be right there in the edge of the woods to go get the acorns or go get the, the beans or whatever. When you when you talk about acorns, it, uh, I'm telling you, here in Missouri, southwest Missouri, if the white oak, white oak acorns start hitting the ground, it doesn't matter if if you had the best of the best food plots, uh, they're gonna they're gonna walk through alfalfa fields to get to one or two acorns on the other side of that field. And we seen it last year. We had acorns fall all at once, and yeah. deer just completely yeah. switched, and we we was having trouble yeah. getting on them. It didn't matter what you put out. I yeah. mean, the corn or anything, they just wasn't coming because they so. they was content where they was at, but. Um, like I said, holler, holler dog outdoors, Austin Anthony. He's a, a great guy. Um, you can get a hold of him. Uh, he'll hook you up with the seed. Um, he does food plots and, and uh, planting and different things, and he can come in and clear your land and and, uh, and do your food plots and fertilize and get you one established. And, and just a great guy to talk to. He does it all the time. That's what he does for a living. So if you have an aerial map, he can help you where – you may want to give you some advice where to put it and what to put down and, and to start establishing it. I know like a lot of food plots um, in the woods and different places like that, throw you some wheat seed or rye or sorghum down that it's definitely going to come up and 
So it may be a process, a stepping stone, if you don't have a lot of money or something like that to put in for fertilizer, whatever plants die that year will go into the soil and, it's, and it provides uh, nutrients to the soil. It's a type of fertilizer that you know, it goes away. And then you can go back and start planting your your uh, seed that comes back up every year, your clovers and different things, and alfalfas and yeah. um, rye and, and uh, wheat's a good, another good one to put around your borders of your your, your food plots. And uh, there's just so much out there. And uh, but you need to know your what kind of soil uh, you're dealing with and, and which, uh, which product to pick and all that. And you know, yeah. best thing to do is get one of the soil test kits. And then message one of uh, uh, the team members directly. Get a hold of Wildlife Overdose Store directly, and we will yep. help you use the discount code from our website or whatever it takes to get you set up and get you some food plot on the way. And yep, um, it uh, it's not it's not a hard task to put in a little food plot for rifle hunters. It really helps them, but for bow hunters, it can be the ticket. To, uh, yeah. killing that deer because you can bring it into that area you need to make the shot but uh, guys just if you got any questions about food plots or whatever uh, holler at us on Facebook um, we'll get you set up and uh, any of the team members can get you directed the right direction so uh, be sure you follow us on Facebook or Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, we appreciate you Come along with us, and hopefully we taught you something. If you got any questions, just just holler at us. Until next time, we'll see you later. I can't wait for this fire hall to be at their camp.